The doors to the Viridian Tea House are open once more. Hello everyone. Well, uh, most of Colorado is still covered in snow, but the temperatures are warming up. We're no longer in the negative numbers. And I think tomorrow it's supposed to be in the mid 40s. So yay, winter, you know, what are you gonna do? It's all part of the cycle. So I've got some exciting books to talk about, a tea blend to rejoice over and a music album that made me cry because it's so beautiful. So if you're ready, let's do this. So the first book I wanna talk about, I never met this woman, but she has been such a profound influence in my life in the past couple of years. For many of you know, I meditate and journaling and all this kind of stuff. If you're, in, if you're into meditation or if you wanna to start to get into meditation but you're not really sure where to begin, I highly recommend Insight Timer. They have all different kinds of guided meditations. They have just nature sounds, bird sounds, classical music, challenges, like I'm currently part of a challenge uh, about refreshing and renewing your life for 2024. And one of their teachers is someone that I highly, highly admire. And her name is Sarah Blondin, and this is her book, Heart Minded, How to Hold Yourself and Others in Love. I had heard about this book and I kept meaning to purchase it and purchase it. Well, thankfully, Denver Public Library had a copy of it, so I checked it out and it was just what I thought. So let me read the desk jacket for you. When we turn toward our hearts, we arrive like a bolt of lightning in the precise moment and all our arguments against ourselves and life go quiet. We feel lit from within by a force we had no idea was there. No matter where you are, no matter what you are doing, you can touch this place in yourself to feel free and alive. That's a quote by her. With poetic brilliance and skillful instruction, Sarah Blondin brings you a treasury of meditations and spiritual teachings to help you detach from your busy mind and tune into your feeling heart. As the students of our popular online trainings can attest, these simple and powerful practices can instantly bring you into a deeper connection with yourself and others. And you can go back to these meditations whenever you feel overwhelmed, disconnected, or afraid. That's one thing about this book is you don't have to read it from beginning to end. You can jump all around and it all makes relevant sense for you. It, you are the individual and the book can be treated like an individual as well. Read Heart Minded from front to back for a full course in living a life guided by the wise heart or open to any page for a reminder that beneath your burdens and troubles, you are fundamentally whole and free. And this book includes links to free guided meditations on audio presented by the author. And about Sarah Blondin, she is an internationally beloved spiritual teacher. Her guided meditations on the app Insight Timer have received nearly 10 million plays. She hosts the popular podcast Live Awake, as well as the online course Coming Home to Yourself. Her work has been translated into many languages and is in use in prison, recovery, and wellness programs. So yeah, this is, this is the kind of book that you need when you're searching for a way to look inward and to tap into your heart, to listen to your heart. You know, so as she puts it, so many of us live in our minds, you know, we're so focused on our minds and <clears throat> the brain, the brain, the brain. But with the heart, it's a completely different voice and it needs to be listened to more, I think. But there are wonderful meditations at every chapter each chapter you will hopefully gain some insight and wisdom about your own life and just overall it's a nice gentle break from the chaotic pressures of the world so i cannot speak any higher than i am about this book but heart-minded how to hold yourselves and others in love by sarah blondin does receive five pots of meditative calming tea from Viridian Tea House. And I, like I said, if you are looking for a really good meditation app, I 
highly, highly recommend Insight Timer. It, it really is a fantastic app. It, it truly, truly is. You can go from like one minute all the way to like eight hours or maybe even more, but it's all up to you. So, all right. So the next book, I never heard of the author, but thanks again to Denver Public Library, I read about her and was th I thought, okay, you know, give it a shot. And this was one of those few books where I said, dear God, I want everything this woman has ever written. And this is Even Tied by Therese, Therese Bowman. That's the cover of it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let me read the back of it for you. An astute novel that follows the life of an art history professor at Stockholm University as she navigates the academic world with its undercurrents of eroticism, competition, deceit, and fear. In her 40s, childless and living alone, Carolina or Carolina Anderson feels adrift after the breakup of a long relationship. She finds fulfillment in her work, and when she starts advising a new postgraduate student, she is struck by his confidence. He claims to have discovered new materials from a female artist working around 1900 that could change the history of Swedish visual arts. She soon finds herself embroiled in a complex game with both emotional and professional consequences. Even Tide is a perceptive novel of ideas about love, art, and solitude in our time, and the distorted standards to which women are held in their relationships and careers. And about the author, uh, she is a columnist for Expressen, writing about literature, art, culture, and fashion. Her debut novel, Drowned, was published by Other Press in 2012, followed by The Other Woman in 2016. She lives in Sweden. So one thing that I have to say about this book, one, it gripped me from beginning to end. And I was like, how's this gonna end? How's this gonna end? Oh, it ended like that. Okay, cool. Very nice. I, I didn't just, I didn't hate Carolina, but I just really didn't like her. She was this person who drifted from one situation to the next. She wasn't married. She was dating someone, but she dumped the guy because she realized that she wasn't in love with him and that she had nothing in common with him. And all of her relationships were just f fragilely tied together. She reminded me of me when I was younger, a little bit of personal hair, and it hit home. I mean, it didn't bother me to read it, but I just kept pulling the book away going, that's how I used to be. That That's really how I used to be, wow. But the relationship that she has with the postgraduate student, it's like this tug of war. Like who is going to, who's going to be the more dominant? Who's going to out manipulate the other person? And you don't really see the manipulation until it's too late. But I hope that at the end that she begins to actually live and not just continues to drift and be angry at the world for no reason. But still, this was one hell of a book, hell of a read. And like I said, I want to read her other books because I know they will be just as fantastic. So Even Tied by Ther Therese Bowman receives five pots of tea from Viridian Tea House. It really was an excellent literary read with a little bit of psychological drama but um, the ending I thought was really satis satisfactory and uh, I just hope that the character goes on to finally figure some things out. So many thanks for this book. And now finally, my third book, I've heard about this author for many years, but never read him. And then once again, well, this is from Arapaho Library. I decided to check it out and when I read it, Wow, so this is Gay Talese, Bartleby and Me, Reflections of an Old Scrivener. So let me read the dust jacket for you. Let's see. Um, New York is a city of things unnoticed. A young reporter named Gay Talese wrote 60 years ago. He would spend the rest of his legendary career defying that statement by celebrating the people most reporters overlooked 
understanding that it was through these minor characters that the epic story of New York and America unfolded. Inspired by Herman Melville's great short story, Bartleby, Bartleby the Scrivener, which I have read, I highly recommend it. Talese now revisits the unforgettable nobodies he has profiled in his celebrated career. The, from the New York Times anonymous obituary writer to Frank Sinatra's entourage. In the book's final act, a remarkable piece of original reporting titled Dr. Bartha's Brownstone, Talese presents a new Bartleby, an unknown doctor who made his mark on the city one summer day in 2006. Rising within the city of New York are about one million buildings. These include skyscrapers, apartment buildings, bodegas, schools, churches, and homeless shelters. Also spread throughout the city are more than 19,000 vacant lots, one of which suddenly appeared some years ago at 34 East 62nd Street between Madison and Park Avenues when the unhappy owner of a brownstone at that address blew it up with himself in it. Rather than sell his cherished 19th century high stoop Neo-Grecian residence in order to pay the court ordered sum of 4 million to the woman who had divorced him three years earlier. Uh, let's see, uh, Talese has been obsessed with Dr. Bartha's story and spent the last 17 years examining this single 20 by 100 foot New York City building lot its serpentine past and the unexpected triumphs and disasters encountered by its residents and owners, an unlikely cast featuring society wannabes, striving immigrants, gilded age power brokers, Russian financiers, and even a turncoat during the War of Independence, just as he has been obsessed with similar nobodies throughout his career. Concise, elegant, tragic, and whimsical, Bartleby and Me is the valedictory work of a master journalist. And about Gay Talese, he was credited by Tom Wolfe with the creation of an inventive form of nonfiction writing called the New Journalism. He spent his early career at the New York Times, then moved to Esquire, where he produced some of the most celebrated magazine pieces ever written, including Frank Sinatra Has a Cold, which Vanity Fair has called the greatest literary nonfiction story of the 20th century. His books include The Kingdom and the Power, Honor Thy Father, Thy Neighbor's Wife, Unto the Sons, and The Voyeur's Mind. Uh, let's see, born in Ocean City, New Jersey in 1932. He lives with his wife in New York City. They have two daughters. So the new journalism, that's him on the back there. Reading this book made me think of, I'm at some bar in New York City and it's raining outside and I really don't feel like going to where I'm, I'm gonna go. So I decide to have, you know, a cup of tea because the bartender has tea, he's a tea fanatic. And in walks this elegantly dressed older man. He sits down next to me and we just polite introduction. And then he begins to tell me a strange story and then it turns into more stories and more stories. And before I know it, I don't wanna leave. I just wanna listen to him talk. And that's how it felt when I read Bartleby and Me. My favorite story of the three would have to be about Frank Sinatra. I really, because I'm a big Frank, Frank Sinatra fan. But reading Bartleby and Me was like reading fiction and even even better than that was the author just, like I said, sitting next to you and just talking, not putting on any airs, not acting like he was better than you or worse than you, but he was just telling you a story about the things he's encountered in his very long and fulfilling life. And if you're looking for nonfiction that you feel that way about, you cannot go wrong with Bartleby and me. And Trifecta, it does receive five pots of tea from Viridian Tea House. But yes, I really enjoyed the Frank Sinatra story. I enjoyed all of all the stories, but I liked how he focused on the nobodies, the people that get ignored or looked over or not seen as significant or what have you. But he puts them onto paper and he does it in such a way that you can't help but care. So many thanks for Bartleby and me. I truly did enjoy reading that book. So now on to the music part. Um, so 
Not too long ago, I started getting into progressive rock, which actually I've been into all this time, but I didn't know it was called progressive rock. And, you know, just discovering the music and, and the multi-layered storylines and, and the long guitar solos and, and all of it, and just the art and the creativity that flows, that comes out when you listen to some of these albums. So there's one group that I've been kind of listening to obsessively off and on, and they're called Nine Skies. They hail from France, and they are a progressive rock band with many influence. They're influenced by jazz and classical and what have you, but they have a style that is unreal. So last year, they released their latest album, which is called The Lightmaker. It came out uh, September 2023. And it tells the story of a man named Rudy, who is living his 1,001st and final life. The album retraces some of his existences through the view of several characters and the introspection of these various incarnations, which undoubtedly encourage reflection on the human condition. You get all of that in this album. So I wanted to I really wanted to purchase this album, but I was like, oh, you know, I can wait, I can wait, I can wait. And I said, no, get it. So I got the digital copy through Bandcamp. They are on Bandcamp. Go check them out. And I had to print off the label cover, but that's the light maker. And let me tell you something. I cried by the second piece. I cried. It's about uh, nine tracks, I wanna say. Let me just look it up because I think I still have it on my media player. Where is it? Yeah, no, eight tracks. So there's Unfani, that's the intro, The Explorer, The Dreamer, The Chaotic, The Lost, The Wanderer, The Haunted, and The Architect. So I loved the entire album. My favorites, though, would have to be The Explorer, The Dreamer, and The Wanderer, and The Haunted. I listened to The Haunted this morning, and at one point, I closed my eyes, and I kind of did like a, a mild meditation to, to the music, but it was absolutely stunning. The entire album is stunning. If you're, if, even if you're not into prog rock, if you are just looking for a different kind of band, a different kind of music that makes you just leave whatever reality you're in and float to meet this man named Rudy who's lived so many lifetimes, you really need to listen to Nine Skies. They do have several albums out and I think you can purchase much, most of them digitally. I think a lot of their hard copies are sold out right now. But if you have an account with Bandcamp, you can check it out. You can do a, um, you can listen to the sample tracks. But yes, the Light Maker is one of those albums where I, I listened to part of it yesterday, and I was coming up with ideas for tea blends and novels and and short stories and all kinds of things. Just listening to this music, it's just it's it's beyond beautiful. It really is. And if anyone from Nine Skies is watching this, merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. I, there are some artists, you know, I, I, I like all different kinds of music. There's some artists that really get to me. Kate Bush is one, Nine Skies is another, Level 42 is another. I, I'm a big 80s kid, but there are some bands, there's some music. Oh, David Poe is another one where you listen to their music and it's beyond music. And you just, you don't want to fight it. You just take it in. You take in what they have and you just enjoy it. So once again, Nine Skies' new album, The Light Maker, is available through Bandcamp. Check it out, check it out, check it out. <laughs> so on to the tea. So this is one of my tea blends. I am featuring imported tea from Pluto, never forget the dwarf planet. So as many of you know, I'm a big science nerd. And in coming up with this tea blend, I thought, you know, what if I were to go to Pluto and just 
say, you know, I see you, I recognize you. you, you're a dwarf planet, but I see you. So the ingredients for this is white tea, and all of my white tea blends use white peony or bimudan, also cacao nibs and peppermint. Because in looking at the picture of Pluto, I thought, you know, kind of reminds me of like a peppermint patty. So what would come close? So white tea, cacao nibs, and peppermint to create imported tea from Pluto and from me to you. Yep, it's like, it's kind of like a liquidy light peppermint patty. And it really is good. With white tea, I let it steep at the most three minutes. Technically, it's supposed to be like one to two minutes, but for this one, I kind of let it steep for three. Uh, any longer than that, and for some reason, it just tastes bitter. Um, I've said this before in other videos, but a lot of people think that white tea has the least amount of caffeine, and that's not true. Actually, it has quite quite the caffeine in it. It's also the least processed of teas because it's just pluck, dry, and pretty much that's it. But yes, this is a light, delicious, quite, quite flavorful tea. And I really thought that the peppermint, because when I made it in my Brown Betty teapot, I got a big whiff of the peppermint and I was like, oh, did I get heavy handed with it? But actually after steeping it, It works well with the white tea and the cacao nibs. So once again, imported tea from Pluto is made through my tea company. You can get it through my Etsy store and you can also get it through my Shopify store, which is viridianteacompany.com. And that's Vir Viridian spelled with an I, not with an E, but you can get it through Etsy or my Shopify store. All right, so before I wrap it up, let's just, oh yeah, I forgot to mention. So I have a new tea drinking buddy that I picked up at the Magic Makers Market. He's a cute little happy sack. And I wanna give a good shout out, make sure I have the right name, to Jelly Love Creations. I had the pleasure of having my table next to their table and they were a hoot and a holler and I loved hanging out with them. So yes, if you go to her Etsy store, you can find more of his friends available. But yes, I had to get him. You can just see all the different colors. But I thought, you know, you are gonna be my little tea drinking buddy. So many thanks to Jelly Love Creations for my little tea buddy. Right, so <sighs> it's time for a tea and water breathing meditation. Make sure you have a glass of water or a cup of your favorite tea. Find yourself in a comfortable position and let's begin. Let's end this breathing meditation with a deep breath in through the nose and out through the mouth. Slowly open your eyes or allow your eyes to come into focus. And now have a sip of your water or your tea. Delicious. So that's all I have for today. Many thanks to Gay Talese, Therese Bowman, Sarah Blondin, to the wildly creative band Nine Skies, and as always to you for watching these videos. I really do appreciate it. Thank you so much. So I will see you guys really soon. Take care of yourself and each other. 
raise your tea mug high, and remember that to drink tea is to enjoy life. I will see you guys really soon. Bye for now.